Hey viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. It's a 2017. It's a Buick. It's the Encore. It's got the big one for, and it needs a bunch of work. I think we already previously did a video on the blower motor. Hopefully, I did that video. It's interesting. And then, uh, customer had me look at some other things. It needs brakes all the way around. It's got bad lower ball joints. Uh, which he chose to do the he chose to do the whole control arm because the bushings are starting to tear out of those and it also has a bad tie rod end. So in this video we're gonna start by doing the uh, lower control arms. We'll start by grabbing a 3-8 Ugga Dugga gun. I grabbed this a 15. We're gonna start on the other side though because it's a nut and a bolt. So we'll stick this on the nut side. It takes it right off. I grabbed this a brass punch and a hammer because I assumed that we were gonna have to knock this thing through with this pinch bolt here. Yes, ma'am. Probably has knurls on it. And it does not, should not knurly, just a straight bolt. And then we gotta do the same thing on the other side. This next part, we have to remove one of the most deadly nuts in the world, the flag nut. Those things will cut your finger plum off. We're gonna take some of your favorite penetrating oil. <laughs> you thought he was whipping out the dub D. Give her a liberal douching, both bolts that go through the control arm. Here, uh, count to three, two, one. Now that it's sufficiently penetrated, we're on a half inch Uggie Duggie. And we're coming up in here with a swivel. I need 18. Watch your teeth, these things will get you. Do not put your fingers back here. I'm gonna tell you what. If you do, record it. Oh, right there, she would've got you. She got you. Now you can put your finger there. Oh, she will get you, those things are mean. <laughs> Leave the bolt in there for the time being. This time we're gonna need a wrench, no flag nut here. I think anybody who's worked on cars probably has a story about a flag nut. If you don't, you haven't worked on cars long enough. Or you're not stupid. One or the other. Do the same thing on the other side. Now that you have them off both sides, we're gonna to wanna to spritz down the ball joint here. This is coil, so you only need a just a drop. And then we'll wait for the ball joint to pop out. This ball joint's junk. What's that mean? It means you get to use the pickle. It's got a lot of space here. I don't know if it's gonna be helpful or not. I'll be dang it was. They usually don't come out that easy. There's that one. We'll do the other side. It should be Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say we should be able to pop our bolts out. They came out no problem. I don't know if they're different or not, so we'll keep them separate until we find out. And on the passenger side, they're the same. At least in my case. We'll pop that little guy out. Easy peasy. See the bushings in these things. They start to rip away. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's got a tear spot there. They're on all four of them. So they start to rip away. So when the ball joints go bad, you can buy just the ball joint, but make sure you're checking the bushings because you know if they're tearing away, just put the control arm on. It's really not that much more than, than just the ball joint. Now before we go slipping that new one in, we're gonna give it a good old hole polish here. Oh, that might be a little tweet. Let's see, she's a brand new flappy disc. Oh, one time, she's shining neat. Got our new arm from Napper, not a sponsor. You should be able to slip it right up in here. Like so. Let me get a little fluid film to spritz on these bolts. We'll give her a shot right in the hole. That way. Make sure we have sufficient lubrication and then we'll slip these babies in from the inside here. Like that. Wiggle it a little bit to get them lined up. Oh yeah! And then we'll grab one nut. 
for the back side. One flag nut for the front side. This is where it can get a little tricky. I'll do this where you can't see it, but. See if we can't spin the bolt, get it started. Okay, I believe that's started. We're gonna grab the half inch Uggy Duggy. Uh, don't tighten these things up yet, but we're just gonna run them down to where the, <laughs> to where the nut's about ready to clamp her down. Okay, that one's still loosey-goosey. We'll come around, we'll get this little fella here too. Have to hold that one with a wrench, remember. Alright, and you're going to want to leave those loose. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. But before we do that, we're going to we're going to do that. We'll give this a little sprit up in our freshly cleaned hole and move you guys. Oh, mother of Get this thing so it's kind of straight. And then we'll very gingerly. Whoa, whoa, wait, hey. easy, easy, come on. Okay, calm down. Get this little spritz up in there. We'll take our bolt. Did we get the groove, did we? Yes, ma'am, we got the groove. We're grooving. Right, what we'll do is I'm gonna take and pop the control arm in the other side, same process as this side. Then we're gonna stick a jack stand under here, set the car down, get this at ride height, or we're gonna use a floor jack, one or the other, probably a floor jack. Then we'll tighten up the ball joint and then both of the uh, inner bolts here. So we'll jack this up a little bit here. I usually do it until it starts picking up the weight of the car. We could have it on the lift, so it's a little bit different, but give her a second here to steady out. And there, she's just about flat, so we're going to call that ride height. We're going to go through and torque the ball joint first. All right, let's see. So your first pass, do her at 31 foot-pounds. Back her off 120. Light snug and dug it going forward. For all the torque Nazis, we'll grab ourselves a torque wrench. We're going to go, I think it's 26 foot-pounds. I'll have to go verify that. I probably need to grab an extension anyways here. So we're going to go 26 foot-pounds. Right there. And then we want to go another 35 degrees beyond that. We'll let our torque wrench calibrate here. And we're going to go an additional... 35 degrees right there putting our total torque at 457 inch pounds on our rear bolt here first of all if you think anybody's actually torquing this in real life you're out of your mind well we're going to go 60 foot pounds all right, we got that and then now an additional 60 degrees so we're going to let our torque wrench calibrate here oh it's already calibrated so we're going to bump her up to 60 degrees, see if we can get her one click at a time. Or if you live in reality, just snug it up. Oh, there it is. We went 61 degrees. And it ended up being 81.6 foot-pounds. Try to get in here on this one. The moment you start adding swivels to your torquing, your torque is irrelevant anyways. You can do an extension, but if you add a swivel, forget about it. You know, now you're you're out of it. So let's see if we can get this baby torqued to 60 foot pounds. We're on the way. One click at a time. We could make up a song. 
I torqued it one click at a time, and it didn't cost me a dime. You guys know what I'm saying. This is ridiculous. <laughs> We're almost there. I can feel it. All right, there we go. We hit the 60, 2.2 foot pounds on this one. And then we're gonna switch over. And now we need to take in an additional 105 degrees. One click at a time. Imagine if you didn't have a tech angle torque wrench, how the heck you would get in here and with an angle gauge and put out 105 degrees. beat oh we hit 113 wow that's a pretty short video I think so we're gonna keep it on keep on keeping on we're gonna spritz down our tie rod in here liberal douching of the croil we'll grab us a 21 now that we've given that time to penetrate crack this jam nut loose looks like she's probably stuck to the inner so we're gonna leave that right with that for right now Grab the 18, I think that's what we got going on. Yes, sir. Um, we could let the car down. It'd be a little easier. We'll try it like this. These lock nuts oftentimes will break the stud loose. Coming off. Not this time it didn't. Let's get us a hammer. Couple love taps. Yeah, okay, I had to make sure I was doing the right uh, tie rod in. <laughs> Let's count our turns. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven, and an eight, and a nine, and a 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it fell off. So this one's pretty clunky. She got some, she got some play, 15. 15 turns. Let's make sure our jam nuts loose. Why? Because we love our alignment guy. If you're doing this, folks, and you're taking it in for alignment, A, buy the guy donuts, and B, get your jam nut freed up if you just put a tie rod on it. I'm not saying you gotta go through and free everything up under the whole car for the fella. If you're awesome, you would. But, if you put a tie rod on it, at least free up that jam nut. Okay. Got your wire brush, go over all the threads, all that stuff. There you go, that's all you need to do. Just like that, crack it loose a little. Okay, now she's free. You only gotta go in just a wee bit. It's not like this guy's you know, gonna go more than you know, a turn or two from where it was originally, but it makes it a heck of a lot easier. We'll grab our new tie rod here. Got it from Napper. That's the premium chassis part. They don't sponsor us. So we can still talk crap about them if we have to. We'll take this nut off right here. We'll go get some lube. Fill her up. Spin it on 34 times, just like the number you took it off. One, two, three, four, 14, 15. It's probably one too many. It ain't going anywhere, so we're gonna take it over to the alignment machine. But see now, my guy Josh, he can turn that thing in and out pretty easily. He gonna be happy. We ain't buying him donuts, so. This, this is a very slight snug up. We ain't gotta go super tight. We'll get this baby on. We'll ram her home. I mean, torque it to spec. Now, this is the important part. Go get your yellow stand, which you've never finished. <laughs> We're gonna leave her all the way down. I left it open for jobs like this in particular. Not really, I just haven't finished it yet. We're gonna set the old tie rod on there. She's gonna give it a push, because that's a lock nut. 
and it's gonna make it a little easier than holding the center stud if we can get a little more tension on the stud. That's gonna get somebody's go. I just used the word tension in place of the word pressure. <laughs> oh, somebody is slamming on their keyboard right now. That's okay. Tension, pressure, yeah, what's the difference? Somebody will explain it to you. So now we're gonna grab our torquey wrench. We're gonna torque that baby down to factory specs, which I think we've already gone too far. So I think it's like 22 foot pounds. So we better back that off, because that was more than 22. Flip around the old X-beam. There we go. We'll go get a socket. Sorry, fellas. There's 22 foot-pounds. And then we want to go about a 130 degree. So we'll wind her up here to 130. And we pull. And we pull again. And we keep pulling. Basically, we're just snugging it up till it's tight, is what they're telling us. There's 130, max spec is 135 degrees. End up being 61 foot pounds. How do we know when we were turning that though, that stud wasn't turning? Well, we're gonna have a look. We're gonna get that extra five degrees and have a look, was it turning? Nope, and it feels tight, so that's good. Make sure our jam nut's snug. Yes, uh, snug enough. Snug enough. We've got some Valvoline full synthetic grease here. We'll give it a couple squirts. Nobody ever complains if the grease soap base that I use is compatible with what's in the tie rod end though. That's a different level troll there. So that's it folks, lower control arms, outer tie rod on your Buick Encore. I guess it is the Encore with the big 1.4 turbo. And uh, that's it, use common sense when you're doing things. If you can't control yourself and you're not sure about fastener or torquing and tightness and if it's gonna hold or not, use a torque wrench. And obviously with, with everything, use service data. You know, don't lubricate the bolts, replace them, you know, follow it step by step. And it won't lead you in the wrong direction, uh, obviously. So, um, but other than that, just use your noodle and uh, don't be a ding dong. That's the only advice I can give you. That's what I tell my kids all the time. Don't be a ding dong, that's all I ask. And all I'm going to ask you is go in that comment section. Questions, the comments, the Insta, the Facebook. We're not on the TikTok though. That's a posture. And just remember, I can do it. You can do it. Thanks for watching.